Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Okay, opened a nice one. Squee, Dubious Monarch. Powerful card by itself. Goes well in any token or go wide strategy. But uh, any red deck is happy to have Squee. So definitely going to be my first pick. What else do we have? Prayer of Binding, Decent Removal in White, Splashable as well. Then uh, I'm a fan of the Hydromancer, but you do need to be pretty dedicated to ramping and hopefully have some big creatures to copy. If we do end up in blue red, can hope to wield the Amplifier. Can hit pretty hard if you have enough instants and sorceries. And uh, of course, the dual lands are incredibly important in this format for the various multicolor decks and domain synergies. And uh, I guess mental notes, there's a shield wall in case we open other defender synergies. But uh, yeah, we'll take Squee. Next up, seems like a pretty easy Lightning Strike. I do think Extinguish Delight is better than Lightning Strike. So it's actually kind of close, but the fact that we first picked a red card means I should probably just stick to a Lightning Strike. And then there's another Amplifier we can hope to wheel. Haven't had great experiences with a Berserker, so that's not immediately on the list here. Uh, Raf can also be very powerful. And uh, the Sojourner, also part of a nice cycle of commons. Since green has so many domain synergies, can easily play it for 4-5 mana. So yeah, take a Lightning Strike and once again hope to wheel Amplifier. Alright, so this red card is not very good sadly. Transformation, one of the few completely unplayable rares in the set in my opinion. We do have Impulse if we want to go blue-red spells. This is not a bad cantrip, can fuel our Tolarian Terrors and enable our Amplifiers. So I think I'm still down to take an Impulse, otherwise Goblin Picker would probably be my next pick. No pun intended, as just a fine 2-drop that gives us a bit of card selection later in the game. So yeah, let's uh, go with Impulse here. And what's next? We've got Protect the Negotiators, more of a blue-white card, not super interested if we're just blue. The Cav was not bad, it's just a 3-mana creature, so that could be the pick. Could also speculate on uh, maybe a white splash by taking Sacred Peaks. There's also still the chance we could end up, let's say, a red-black, take Garna, and uh, that could also work out. It also, of course, hurt that we passed that extinguish earlier but maybe it's worth speculating here in case blue red doesn't pan out even though i'm hoping to wield those amplifiers since garna's probably higher upside than kavu and kavu does seem replaceable enough if we end up blue red so we'll try that out okay probably just a fire nado five minus kind of pricey but still nice to have removal that can deal with almost anything. The Sojourner is an example that doesn't die to Fire Nado. There's a couple other big ones. Although that is also pretty late for Exxon Rager, to be honest. So we could also take the Rager and then pivot Black Red. The Vivisector is also not a bad 2-drop. So maybe I should take the Black here since there's no amazing blue card left. The Turtle is pretty filler. So you know what, yeah, let's take the Rager. I don't think I'm gonna miss Fire Nado too much, even though it would be fine in blue-red spells as kind of a top-end removal spell. And then, hmm, now we're getting some good blue cards with uh, Essence Scatter mostly. Shadow Prophecy, I'm not a huge fan of if we're just gonna be two colors, but uh, still playable, I suppose. And the Steel Crusher is a pretty underwhelming 2-drop in my experience. Not too many artifacts that we need to take out, and a list also just proven to be an underwhelming mechanic. So yeah, I'll just take the Axel Scatter, and then we're not committed to either blue or black yet, but hopefully we're red as a base. 
All right. Now, could always take the Librarian as a card we can play in any deck. The Strike Team would go for a uh, red-white kind of tokens deck, and there is also reinforcements. We also saw that um, kind of heroic charge in white that we might also wheel. So I guess the third option is red-white tokens go wide with maybe some black on the splash. So then would I rather have strike team or reinforcements? That one's close. I'll go with the strike team. It's still a 3-1 that we can play if we're not playing white. And then, yeah, we are seeing some black-red cards here. So I might take the Frenzy as a mass pump spell, Bellow and Blessing, find two mana tricks as well, probably prefer Bellow over Blessing, but they're both playable. And then uh, the Vanguard would also go well in a red-white tokens deck. So, interesting spot. Go with the Frenzy. And then we did wield the Amplifier. Could still play it outside of blue, I suppose, if we have enough enablers. But uh, no black card I really want here. I guess Barricade has a bit of synergy with tokens, like we can sacrifice a Goblin from Squee to draw, but for the most part we're trying to be more aggressive. Wield the Author Amplifier. Okay, so we've put ourselves in a spot where we can easily go either blue-red or black-red, depending on what we open and pack to, which is not a bad place to be. The card quality overall is pretty high, and I guess I'll just rare draft this, since I don't think I'll be playing a mana worker in this deck. Alright, the sabotage could be fine. There's even the heroic charge that also wield, on the off chance that we end up red-white. Probably more likely to be black still. And then the turtle for blue. Okay, let's see where this ends up. Opened a green rare, threats undetected. That one's probably not worth splashing. There's another essence scatter. Now essence scatter, a bit of a nombo, I guess you could say, with the amplifier, since you wouldn't be pumping it in your turn necessarily. But I uh, can hope to wheel a shore up if we're going for the blue-red beatdown deck. In which case, this is a nice trick to have. Uh, Hammer Hands does not trigger the Amplifier, so not the best synergy there, even though it does go in an aggressive red deck, potentially. And then there's no black cards I'm too excited about. I guess Frightful Return might be the best one, but even there, I'm not thrilled about it. So probably take Essence Scatter, hope to wheel Shore up, and then uh, we're maybe setting up for blue-red spells as there's another amplifier, a raven man. Raven man's probably not amazing here. I mean it's still a two drop with the late game utility so it can't be too bad but um, yeah I think if we can draft a more streamlined blue-red deck that's probably for the best. Take amplifier, hope to wheel the dual land or the drake, even the fire nado. Or I could take the dual lands, which is also quite valuable still. Although if we can have a consistent turn to amplifier, we can sort of build our deck around it to make sure we have that aggressive start. So I'll try this. And this pack does not have a whole lot for us. A lot of white cards. The uh, phalanx as well. Yeah, just six playable white cards, I guess bridge only in the defender decks, and then a sentinel. Could take like a pilfer or necromass on the off chance we still in the black, although it seems unlikely. I guess pilfer has a bit of synergy with amplifier in case we end up black red spells or maybe splashing blue, but uh, yeah kind of a disappointing pack for us. Okay, the uh, lookout is probably the pick. Best blue card here by far. Fire Nado, close seconds, just because it's another way to trigger Amplifier while clearing a path. I think Lookout is still worth it. I guess there's like a tiny consideration for Tribute as a black removal spell that could still trigger Amplifier. Maybe we can splash blue, but I don't really want to splash if I'm going for an aggressive deck. 
or go with three colors because Essence Scatter is not really a great splash card if you need access to it on turn two or three. Okay, another lookout. There's Jin as well. Jin can be decent as a finisher, but it is kind of pricey at six, and we're maybe looking to play a lower land count to make use of arcane trips like Impulse, so then I'm also less likely to want a six mana card. Thrall can also be powerful in red black specifically, but I think it's looking more like blue red at this point. So I'll take another look out. And yeah, another amplifier. We'll just keep taking these. Can also be kicked at five mana to give us a bit of interaction. But uh, yeah, research really needs some flying creatures to shine and don't really have those. So take amplifier over Cyclops. And then now not really going for defenders could see playing one negate although i would much prefer shore up since we can use that proactively to pump our amplifiers so we can probably cut to black at this point Kavu probably good to make the cut and then frenzy probably not good enough if we're not gonna splash black strike team also Kind of questionable if we're just blue reds, but it is still a creature we can play. And then I would love more cantrips like Impulse, the uh, one mana shrink a creature down draw card would also be great. And uh, let's see how many threats undetected do I have? I guess I have four already, so I'll take a librarian in case I need more filler creatures. Okay. And a Fire Nado Wheel, that's excellent. So we do need quite a few more playables because we dabbled into another color, but the quality of our deck so far is pretty high. Not wheeling the shore up is a little bit uh, concerning, it means we're probably not going to get all the blue red spells cards, but a Keldon Flame Sage. Could be pretty decent. Not the best combo with uh, counter spells, but it is good with burn spells like Lightning Strike and Fire Nado. If we can uh, increase its power enough, what else would be the pick here? There's a land to maybe splash white for Strike Team. Don't think Monstrosity is going to be worth it, even though we can maybe pump our amplifiers twice and then cast it on the cheap. Seems difficult to set up. And then there's just another amplifier and an essence scatter as well. Now let's try out uh, Flame Sage and then really hope we can find some more proactive instants and sorceries. Probably can't go wrong with the Storm Runner here. I guess Geyser might actually be better for our deck. It is a good combo with the card we just picked up, the Flame Sage. I mean, this card can be powerful if we get to copy a removal spell. But again, not the best with counter spells. So I could actually see Geyser performing better in our deck. Keep the curve nice and low. And uh, the early amplifiers can put in a ton of work if we can keep bouncing the opponent's creatures over and over. And we might even wield the Storm Runner if no one else is specifically blue red. All right, easy lightning strike. That's a gift. Not going to think too much about it here. And Twinferno could also be decent. I would even consider Impede Momentum as just a two mana sorcery to trigger our creatures and to get something out of the way since we're trying to close out the game quickly. Although there's a chance we can wheel this or pick up another copy later. So Twinferno to give double strike seems pretty decent. Can maybe even copy a lightning strike with it. And uh, yeah, maybe there's another amplifier we can wheel. I'll take as many of those as I can get. Here, not looking to splash black. No, don't need a smash to dust, so we can rare draft since probably not playing a tight turner either. We're at 20 cards right now, so I do need three more playables, but I'm confident that we can get there. 
maybe a Cyclops as a bigger creature. Although we have quite a few 5 drops if you count Kicked Amplifier as a 5 mana play. So it's possible I just prefer another Kavu. Rivas would just be a rare draft here. I guess I could use a fourth copy, but might end up short on playables otherwise. Okay, I guess a three power haste creature is still playable. Or actually, never mind, I didn't recognize the art on Thrill of Possibility. Yeah, this is actually pretty good in our deck just as a cantrip to enable Amplifier. And nothing here. Maybe a War Brute. Alright, wield Amplifier. And I guess we could just play a 4 mana Act of Treason. Maybe that's good enough. It's gonna be one of the last cuts, potentially. There's another one. Do I want Scorn? Double blue is kind of rough as a counterspell. Although I guess we do have to play Double Lookout as well. Eh, probably still better than the alternatives. Yeah, Impede Momentum might actually make the cut. Alright, so overall going back, if we didn't end up speculating on some of those black cards, I might have ended up with an extra Fire Nado, which I happily would have taken, but with five amplifiers, our deck definitely has a pretty solid game plan. Would have loved more cheap cantrips, but... Uh, We've got a Thrill and an Impulse, at least. Can probably go down to 16 lands. Um, although the double blue on Lookout is a little bit of a concern. So, in terms of interaction... We have Double Lightning Strike, Fire Nado... And then Impede Momentum, Geyser... And then the Essence Scatters as counter spells, maybe a Negate, and maybe Scorn. And then our creatures, five Amplifiers at two. Kavu also plays well with Bound spells, as uh, if the opponent has two blockers, we bounce one. Now all of a sudden our Menace creature can still attack. Flame Sage should be decent. And then, not opposed to playing a strike team, probably better than a Librarian, as our deck is pretty aggressive. Do I want a War Brute? It's not great with Amplifier as a base one-power creature, so we really need something bigger to go with it. Don't think War Brute's going to be amazing. So let's take that out. And then... Yeah, I'm probably thinking Scorn can go double blue, three mana to keep up counterspell, kind of expensive. But I'm not hating the uh, four mana Act of Treason as a potential finisher. And everything else seems pretty reasonable too. And then leaning towards red, since we really want to play Amplifier turn two. With only seven blue sources, we're not guaranteed to play Lookout on Curve. Although we still have other ways to spend our mana. I've got a few cantrips and ways to scry to maybe smooth out my draws to find double blue. But that would be a reason to maybe play a Librarian over Strike Team. But uh, yeah, Strike Team is maybe a way to punish slower domain decks. So fine to give that a try. And then double check our sideboard to see if we didn't leave anything out. And then got to fix these basic lands as well. Okay, well I think we're ready to battle our first big squee. We've got Flame Sage as another rare, and then Double Lightning Strike. We'll see how this deck performs. All right, on the play, no turn to Amplifier. So this hand is Creature and Threat Light. Do have a Cavu on three. But uh, yeah, both Impede and Thrall is not really what I want to be, but it's probably not bad enough to mulligan either. Just hoping to draw Amplifier turn 2 naturally. 
and then the sand is great. Uh, I guess we can impulse to try and find one. A root walla, always good. All right, so tough choice already. Don't have double blue for lookout. Could grab an essence scatter, although I'll be tapping out for Kavu next turn most likely. So it's going to be a while before I can actually keep up essence scatter. I think I need the extra threats, even though it's a bit of a gamble here with only five islands remaining in the top of my deck. Might be a while before we actually cast it. Right, play Kavu. And then I might end up ditching either Thrall or Impede Momentum to the Thrill. So your opponent is up to four types already. Okay. Strike team. I could haste out here. And then attack. Opponent might take the trade, they might have a trick. Don't have a counter spell or any protection really. Or I could thrill discards, maybe thrall, and then hope to hit a land. But even with a land, it's not like we're necessarily doing much. I guess I can pump Kavu either way. If I trade Keldon for Rootwalla, I think we're happy. So probably just Keldon and Smash. They might have their own Lightning Strike. Of course, I'm happy if they take it, and then we can just out-tempo our opponent with Impede and maybe a Thrall to finish him off. But they probably have something here. Alright, bite down. Fair enough. So against green, I could see the value of Impede Momentum if we need to tap a larger creature down for several turns. And I don't know if our opponent's quite low enough for Thrall to be a finisher. Uh, lands, although no double blue. So... Maybe I discard Mountain. Attack, I can pump Kavu. Because, yeah, what does Mountain do for me here? Not much. Maybe eventually kicks Amplifier. So that's maybe a reason to still keep it, and then ditch Thrall instead. Although if I draw another land or two, I might regret it. Alright. So happy with that decision in hindsight. We'll attack, see if they have any responses. Now the problem with pumping Kavu is my opponent could buy town to actually kill it. So there is an argument for just keeping up Lightning Strike instead of hitting for 4. Although missing out on 2 damage also feels bad. Losing Kavu is pretty bad here since it's our only creature at the moment. So I guess we'll play it safe, play around another bite down, see what's up. And then maybe we'll end up just Lightning Striking the Rootwalla if they don't keep up its ability. Best case scenario, they just spent four mana pumping it, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Ah, opponent's got a kicked strike team. Fair enough. That is a lot of blockers. But now I should probably kill Rootwalla. Which is the bigger problem long term. Another land. Yeah, it's not looking great. Probably have to impede the strike team and then scry towards either an island or a spell we can cast. Yeah, I mean, I'm not happy to keep island on top when we have two mountains. But it does cast lookout and if they kill it, I at least draw a card. And then I can pump twice. Uh, 
I can technically pump more than twice, but I wouldn't recommend it. So, not loving my spot. We're behind in the race. Opponent probably has better cards in hand with access to four colors. So, we'll need to be pretty lucky from here. But yeah, maybe our opponent ends up tapping out for a huge creature that we steal and that can give us lethal out of nowhere. We're at a point where we could see some of those larger commons like Sojourner, which the opponent can play pretty easily here. Right, it's going to be a Crusher 2-5. Well, at least they can block my Kavu. So, attack, pump twice, play a lookout. Opponent is at 8, so... It's not out of the realm of possibility here that uh, Thrall can kill them next turn, but they're also close to getting their strike team back. Cavu definitely put in some good work. Now the lookout, holding off the 1-1s one could actually be a drawback here when we're trying to set up a lethal act of treason. But maybe they end up killing it. We'll see. All-out attack. So they could have a pump spell. Let's say they do have a charge. How much damage are we taking? If I don't block, that's 10 down to 1. And then next turn, what happens? I could steal Strike Team. Or does the Impede counter prevent it from untapping as well? Oh yeah, I guess it does. Never mind. Well, I mean, we can still steal the Crusher and we would still have a lethal either way. Yeah, I'll take it. Uh, Colossal Growth instead. 7-8. And that's 12. Well, that's a lot of damage out of nowhere. Had we blocked, I guess we maybe survive, but then we also don't have lethal on the way back. So yeah, tough break. On the play, hand seems fine. This time we have the early amplifier. Double Kavu, and then hoping to find more instants and sorceries, pretty much. Ooh, Stalker, turn one. That's aggressive. Oh wow, opponent with an elf deck. Don't see that every day. Well, a turn two visionary could definitely do some damage. So for now, Kavu does a good job on defense. And then I can pump Kavu and... Um, Play another one. I don't think I attack with Amplifier. Don't want to have to waste it to Inferno. Next turn I can kick Amplifier. So, yeah. Let us attack. They might have a bite down. They don't. And then the plan is kicked Amplifier, turn after, maybe to Inferno to enable them. Alright, Poon lets us draw. That's nice of them. And another Stalker, but no mana to draw with the Visionary here. And take three. Okay. I think the plan is still kicked Amplifier, although now with Assassin Scatter... It's not quite so clear. And then the question is what to bounce. Because bouncing Visionary is a bigger investment for them to replay. Bouncing Stalker removes the most power and toughness. 
on the board, especially with Visionary triggering the two Stalkers again next turn. Can maybe try and set up a situation where we bounce Visionary and encounter it on the way back, but that's not gonna happen right away. I think we're pretty confident that we can win a racing situation. So we'll uh, bounce the most expensive creature. Another song. Do we get to draw again? We do. Alright. Take eight. That is adding up. But, uh... Might be able to kill our opponents this turn. Probably attack with all, see how they block, and then amplifiers I can pump twice with Impulse and to Inferno. So, yeah, we'll see how that works out. Don't really see them double chumping. And then I think the two Cavus by themselves, if we give double strike and pump twice, might have been enough. Opponent does actually double chump. So yeah, let's do some math here. So I can pump twice, four power, to Inferno. That's hitting for eight, and then I can uh, pump the other one as well. I guess, do we have enough red mana? Yeah, we should, right? Alright, barely had enough here. Opponent could have done some damage on the way back, but Twin Inferno for the win. Alright, Amplifier into Squee. Would have been awesome on the play. On the draw, Squee does get significantly worse, but I think still a keep. Maybe end up discarding a Lookout to Thrill. Double Blue definitely proving to be a bit of a challenge. Could have uh, maybe picked up a blue red dual land during the draft to help with that. Yeah, the combination of those early one mana elves with a saga to draw three is actually pretty good. Since if you can kind of break parity by having cheaper threats than the opponents, that's uh, not a bad plan. Opponent on maybe a defender deck. At least Squee can keep making tokens. Well, now the Rager trades for Squee. So don't love seeing that. Probably just play Kavu then and wait for Squee to have a better attack. I mean, at least we would still make a token. So it's not the worst attack. And Kavu does prevent Rager from attacking, so it's not gonna get any better with Squee. Alright, fine. They could also just eat a 1 1 and block with a bulwark, I suppose. So we're giving them the choice of whether to trade or not. Right, opponent accepts, and then later we'll maybe be able to replay it out of the graveyard. Ooh, a green widow. That's a problem. So plan now is probably Kavu, and then next turn kicked amplifier, bounce green widow potentially, and then turn after thrill enable double amplifier. Maybe discarding a land. Ooh, wow, Defiler of Dreams as well. Alright. So we've got our work cut out for us. Probably bounce the Defiler. Another Lookout's awkward. 
possible I should just play one more island anyway, just for the lookout. But no real great attacks. So really hoping to find a lightning strike of this thrill. That will give us a good bit of momentum if we can kill the filer and get a nice attack in. We do need a lot of red mana to pump Kavu, so that's a reason to still lean towards extra mountains. Our deck cannot function without red, but it can potentially work without blue for a while. Right, opponents with a sentinel and a blight pile to inferno is not bad. Probably keep it for double strike. And then... I'm guessing just attack with uh, Kavu and the two amplifiers. And then just uh, end up thrilling, discarding lookout. I can still pump Kavu after casting to Inferno. So that at least trades. Don't think the 1-1's one getting busy. All right, so step one, Thrill. Could also copy with to Inferno, which honestly isn't a bad idea. Because we don't have to discard an extra card, so that part is gone. So it's just going to draw us a ton of cards. Oh, never mind, it's when you cast your next instant or sorcery. Never mind, so we'll just let the thrill resolve then. Okay, thrall could be good. So do we want to double strike the first amplifier here? Would we'll deal quite a bit of damage, and then thrall gets us closer to lethal. Seems worth it. Opponents at 6, and we'll play Islands. So now if they tap out for Defiler, they're close to dead. And they won't be able to afford to pay as much life with it as before. Uh-oh. If our opponent can make a bunch of 1-1 one -one birds here with a Chaplain, we're in trouble. Because that kind of counters our Thrall. Lightning Strike, that's a card. Don't think I'm attacking on the ground. I guess I could play Squee as well. But I think playing a Lookout and then maybe an end of turn Lightning Strike, untap Thrall is going to be better. Let's see if they have a counter spell here. So they could activate Blight Pile for four. That's fine. I guess I could kill the Blight Pile, attack with Amplifier and Kavu. Don't think that accomplishes much. Son of Turn Blight Pile. That's fine. So we're really hoping they tap out for Defiler now. There we go. And they didn't leave a blue mana, so don't need to be afraid of a counter spell. Can't think of too many tricks that save them. I guess I could cast a lightning strike in my turn. Just to trigger amplifier. Sure. Would have been funny if I had a blue spell or permanent to cast afterwards to draw. Alright, opponent's gonna kill my lookout. Sure. So lightning strike should still do it. Alright, awesome.
on the play, and uh, yeah, that's definitely a hand. So, wouldn't mind another mountain or any fourth line to maybe double spell. Alright, Flowstone's a nice one mana answer here to the Amplifier. So that's gonna slow us down significantly. Now they could have an Essence Scatter. They don't. But still holding priority, so could be another burn spell in hand. Opponent also blue reds as we draw more Amplifiers. Hmm. I'm tempted to Impulse to hit my land drop, play another Amplifier. Although if I play an Amplifier now, then we get more benefit out of it next turn. So we'll hit for one. Upside of going for Impulse to hit a land now is that turn after we could maybe also keep up Negate. As now a Scorn counters Amplifier. Alright, that's not bad. So I'm gonna play this main phase in case they Asa Scatter or play another counter spell I can negate and trigger Amplifier to get in more damage. Otherwise typically better to play our spell's second main. And then I'll just let damage happen with a plan of next turn going Impulse to trigger both we can clear a blocker for a while. Alright. I guess I'll hang on to the mountain for now in case I discard it to thrill. And a lightning strike or lookout. Opponent is still at 18. I have Impede to answer a creature. So this one's a close call. Um, a lookout's not great if we're trying to beat an Essence Scatter. But I could see needing an extra threat if our opponent has a couple more removal spells. It also flies. Can maybe fly over a Tolarian Terror. And then now I'm more in favor of playing the land since I might want to play a lookout and keep up negates. Alright, this is perfect. We get to counter our opponent's kicked fires and get in a ton of extra damage. So now I'm hoping they just tap out for some creatures. That's an infantry and a combat research. Okay, well, Thrall to steal it would be pretty funny. Although they probably have a protection spell in place. So maybe I should impede as opposed to Thrall. Let's say they shore up, then it gets a counter, and it also gets plus one plus one, so then we won't be able to attack with our amplifiers. So maybe I should actually just play a lookout and hope they don't have an essence scatter. Because this play, from their perspective, makes a lot more sense if they have Negate or Shore Up as opposed to an Essence Scatter. So let's try that. Alright. And then maybe next turn we'll have 6 mana to play both. So hopefully our opponent just taps out to make it easy for us, but... They probably have a few tricks up their sleeve. Infantry attacks. Yeah, I don't think it's worth it to try and block here with her opponent at 8. Now Shorub does untap the creature as well, so that's still potentially in their hands. Strike team for haste. Geyser seems good. Alright, looks like our opponent didn't have anything, so we might have been able to kill them last turn, but just wanted to play it safe here. On the play, and missing blue mana, but we can amplify our any third land lets me play Squee. So this one is quite tempting. 
Yeah, I'll try. Opponent off to an aggressive start as well. Come on, land. Try and get in with Squee while the get in's good. Island would be preferred. I don't know, opponent's got a two drop. And we missed on a land, so this could get out of hand very quickly. So this can get plus two plus O. Oh. It would still be a trade. And with this kind of awkward start, could actually see the advantage of just wasting the opponent's turn. Since this amplifier is probably not gonna be attacking too much. All right, perfect. So now we get in with Squee, clean attack. And then, uh, yeah, Islands for Impede could be useful for Squee to get in, but at least we have Kavu we can play now. Opponent's getting in, and they've got their own Kavu. Perfect. Think it's worth it to Impede. As much as I want to play my own Kavu first, the Squee attacks just add up so quickly. And definitely don't want another lookout. Probably just the Kavu's ability holding priority for the opponents. Baloth, yeah, that's a good one. Although, so is Lightning Strike. So yeah, we'll attack. They probably block Squee. We finish off Baloth. All's good in the world. And then we even have Essence Scatter at the ready. Now the Cav was close to coming back, but we still have some spells to unload. So this would be a good turn for them to play a big creature. Yeah, that counts. Okay, and I can even replay Squee here if I'd like. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Uses up all my mana. Alternative was maybe Impulse, look for land, play Kavu, but if we miss it's kind of a disaster. Well, we kept our opening hand based on the strength of Squee on the play, and it certainly paid off. And Impede Momentum has been amazing too here. Weather Lights, unlikely to make the difference this game. So our opponent seems dead on board. Block, block. Get an extra goblin. Yeah, sometimes you just need one creature to win the game. I guess they get a redraw here. Did they actually find something? They didn't. All right, on to the next one. All right, on the play with a beautiful hand. Amplifier into strike team, and then some uh, removal to clear a path. Fire NATO at five. 
still pretty far away. But Geyser is kind of perfect alongside Amplifier, as it not only clears a blocker, gives us a nice tempo advantage, but it also draws to keep hitting our land drops towards Fire Nado. Turn 3 Squee, not gonna pass that up. And we even have Geyser and Lightning Strike to clear a path. So unless your opponent has something like a Miasma to wipe the board, this could kill them very quickly, <laughs> alright? It's only fair, it's only fair. Now, how do we handle Squee? I can just Lightning Strike, kill it. Yeah, maybe that's just the easiest solution here. I could play Strike Team and attack, but... Problem with Strike Team is that it's going to be pretty awkward if Squee makes more 1-1s that can later block it. And uh, then we can maybe use Geyser to kill a token later. Bouncing there, Squee, also an option. Just force him to replay it. I think Lightning Strike's a fine use of our mana. And we want to play it now to pump Amplifier, of course. Opponent's already at 9. And then uh, the next big creature we could also bounce if needed. Tributes kills my squee. And another amplifier. Yeah, probably geysering the token here. Keeping red mana in case we draw lands. Any land will do for amplifier. And then impulse is great too. Can play a hasty strike team. And we already have a few spells in the graveyard to replace Squee later, but don't think it's going to get to that point. And Shielder's Restoration to reanimate Squee. That's a bold move. Let's see how that works out for them. Alright. Well, that was fun seeing two Squees on the battlefield. Okay, this is a very creature light hand without any creatures in it. Thrill can discard Mountain to keep digging. And we can keep up as a Scatter or Thrill turn two. Hmm. And we're on the draw. So maybe this one's still keepable with the hope that we do find a threat around turn three. Yeah, I think it's still good enough. Lightning Strike's good too. Hopefully no scary 2-drops, although most of them will still be able to Lightning Strike. That is a pretty scary 2-drop. Well, we have a ton of instants available here. I'll take 2, see what else they play. Yeah, that's worth a Counterspell, I think. Could also be killed by Lightning Strike, but that forces me to basically do it now, because next turn they could easily play a Sorcery to make some tokens, and that one we won't be able to Essence Scatter. The uh, Captain's Call at 4. Still looking for threats. Yeah, let's just Essence Scatter now, since it might be awkward to use Essence Scatter later in the game. Alright, so I'm definitely happy to discard Mountain now to Thrill. Don't have any one mana plays I can pick up, so I guess we'll pass. And then, yeah, really hoping for some action. Yeah, there's a Captain's Call. So those are going to get pumped by Veteran, which is definitely going to need Lightning Strike, although problem is they'll still be able to... Exile Veteran to put counters on the team, so this is bad. But, uh, yeah, Impulse digs a little bit deeper for one card, but given that we certainly don't need two more mountains, this seems fine. Okay. So this they can use at any point. Hmm. Yeah, this is rough. So I probably wait... Let them attack, 
Lightning Strike the Veteran. And then I can Impulse, turn after, maybe Strike Team and another 2-drop. Geyser's gonna be bouncing one of the tokens, most likely. Could get punished by a Protection Spell or a Pump Spell. But I kinda want them to play something else besides paying 5 for the Veteran. To put counters everywhere, since if I'm taking 6 here, that's gonna add up. Alright, that's good. I guess there's no harm in impulsing first. So Squeak can attack, although they can trade for it. Probably still good enough. So kill Veteran, play Squeak attack, although next turn this is luckily not a soldier. We also have a lot of spells in Graveyard, so it's going to be easy to replay Squeak. And a Phalanx, wow. That was unexpected. Now taking Squee looks a lot worse. I guess there was a drawback to casting the Impulse there. Yeah, I wasn't really counting on a second main Phalanx. Alright, that's rough. Can't really play Squee and attack anymore. So we're bouncing a token. Or I could bounce the Phalanx. But they can easily replay it next turn. Is Phalanx a soldier? It is. Yeah, this is probably game over. Can play Strike Team Pass. Probably better to Geyser after they put the counters everywhere. Not that it makes a huge difference. Bouncing Phalanx. I kind of need to play in the same turn as Squee to try and get an attack in, but we're just too far behind on board. Yeah, that's a shame. I wonder what I would have taken if I waited for Impulse. So... Can trade for Cavalier. And how much is this? 8, 13, so we're just dead. Yeah, I think this is game over. No cards in our deck that can save us there. On the play, this hand has potential, if we can pick up a land or two. Gotta believe. Nice. Actually tempted to keep up Essa Scatter. Just because we can make sure Squee has a clean attack. Although there's not many 2-drops that would trade profitably. And we can always Lightning Strike, but... Yeah, it's mostly thinking about turn 4 onwards. If we already have an Amplifier in play and we Lightning Strike, we get in a ton of extra damage. So maybe it's still worth it. Put on pausing with 1 black mana. And they had a cut down. Well, I'm certainly glad we played Amplifier now. Splatter Goblin. With that one I'm less excited to see since it actually trades all the way for Squee. So I might have to pass, let them attack with it. Maybe counter the next creature they play and then attack. Alright, end of turn, opponent stuck on two. Now we'll kill Goblin, attack with Squee. Seems reasonable. No removal. So, we'll see if they can keep hitting their land drops here. But an opponent stuck on two is not going to last very long against Squee.
Alright, there was a fast one. Alright, time for the final boss, and we're once again joined by a Squee in our opening hand. Double lightning strike, I mean, yeah, this seems like a winner if we can pick up a third land. Opponent on a white deck. And they have a 2-drop, sadly. Probably still go for the trade. Have a leftover token and then double lightning strike. We'll fill the graveyard to eventually get Squee back. There's another world where we pass with a plan of maybe Killing the herbalist. Wow, opponent actually took it. So they might have other plans for Squee. Maybe they have a way of exiling it with a citizen's arrest. Yep. Yeah. Fair enough. And herbalist to gain one. Yeah, the citizen's arrest not letting us replay Squee is a pretty big blow. Although. Now at least they're not exiling the Lookout. Do I keep up Essa Scatter? Do I Lightning Strike Herbalist right now? I guess I can just leave back a token, hit for one. It's a little sad, but uh, I'll keep up Essa Scatter for now. And then we might plan to to Inferno copy Lightning Strike. Alright, Griffin, we're happy to either counter or kill. We may not get tons of other opportunities to use as a scatter, let's say we draw island and want to tap out for lookout. But on the other hand, they might also play a four toughness creature like Phalanx that we cannot lightning strike, but we maybe can as a scatter more profitably. I think I'm still liking the as a scatter here. Just allows us to be more proactive in the future. Perfect. So, probably just play Lookout. Can maybe get cheeky and attack with a 1 1. And sure, they can attack back to Scry and gain one. But then I can maybe kill something other than Herbalist to let the Amplifier attack, which is going to hit harder. And then we essentially have three Lightning Strikes in hand, so that's nine points of burn. And with an Amplifier in play, that could quickly add up Herbalist attacks, all according to plan. Now, hoping they just play an individual creature we can kill as opposed to a bunch of tokens, because that would be more annoying for us to connect with the Amplifier. That's a bunch of tokens. Well, probably still attack with all. And then... If they double block Amplifier, so be it. Then I can just Lightning Strike their face anyway. Or maybe I'm just better off playing a Kavu. I think I do accept the trade Amplifier for two tokens, because it also makes it harder for them to play something like Phalanx. And we're still getting in with a Lookout, so... Seems fine. Alright, opponent just takes it. One mana can't think of much they can have in terms of interaction. So if I double Lightning Strike with Twin Fern, or I guess I can Lightning Strike and then give Amplifier Double Strike, which hits even harder, if I'm not mistaken, then are they dead? This goes up to 5, that's 10. Yeah, that should be lethal. So Lightning Strike face, Twin Fern for Double Strike. There we go. Awesome. Well, that was a satisfying ending here to this run. And yeah, just like we drew it up. Early amplifier backed up by 
some burn spells. Definitely got lucky to have Squee in our opening hands several times. But feels like even the amplifiers could have gotten there. Awesome. Well, we can crack some packs here and do some pack one pick ones. Ooh, Sphinx of Clear Skies. Haven't had the chance to play this one in draft, but uh, seems amazing. 5-5 five, five Flyer can provide card advantage when it connects. Although it is competing with some pretty good cards with uh, Extinguish, probably one of the best black commons, and Codex I'm also a fan of in the domain decks. If you can draft a nice dirtily control deck, but still easy Sphinx. Haven't had too much success with Ivy and Limited. There's a few ways you can combo off with it, but for the most part, two mana, two one flyer in a color pair that tends to be more about ramping and domain. So you don't often want an aggressive two drop, but um, yeah, this pack could go for a Miasma, can be effective against those white token decks. Cutdown's always efficient, even if it doesn't deal with the biggest threats. Gaia Smite can be a surprise finisher in the domain deck, so there's a couple options, probably leaning Miasma over Cutdown. Karn Silex, pretty powerful. Opponent does see it coming, but it's still a nice reset button, and uh, there's not too many answers to artifacts out there. So, nice early pick if that goes into any deck, technically, although at its best in a more controlling strategy that can leverage the uh, late game. Ooh, Nemata, this card's awesome. Can easily make a bunch of 1 1 tokens, and then it uh, doesn't take much to take over the board. Great with the Miasma that we saw earlier, too. What's the best rare in this set? Interesting question. Maybe one of the Defilers. Does anything compete with those? Honestly, you might prefer to pack one, pick one, open something like the uh, the Chaplain and draft a Defender's deck, wheel the Sentinel. Yeah, Archangel of Wrath is a good one. Although it does kind of require you to have access to several colors if you want to get the best out of it. The Green Defiler is certainly up there. Yeah, Shieldred's a mythic, so that one's not eligible. Herd Migration, also a fun build around for the domain decks. So, it's definitely not a slam dunk like, uh, let's say, a Dream Trawler and Theros block, which is probably a good thing for Limited, not having those unbeatable bombs at rare. If there's a mythic that's unbeatable, at least you don't see those as often as uh, a rare. And there we go, Defiler of Vigor, Speak of the Devil. Definitely one of the better rares in the set. Just a 6-6 Trampler. Dodges the uh, red 5 damage burn spell. Battle him, can't necessarily kill it. Although the Weather Seed Treaty is also a nice uncommon. Sets you up for the multicolor domain decks. And uh, yeah, even in the late game, you can maybe skip chapters 1 and 2 and still get a ton of damage in. So yeah. Probably still go for Defiler here, but uh, Treaty, one of the better uncommons in the set. Battle him, not bad either. And the Mind Singer's fun too. I've even seen people steal zero powered walls with this, just playing it on turn three. So that's a funny interaction. But uh, yeah, if you can kick this all the way. And the opponent doesn't have removal left over, it's probably game over. Alright, awesome. But for now, want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.